Well, in, so that in the case of integrable, conventional integrable systems, beta unsolved solvable systems or non-interacting systems, then it would go to the generalized Gibbs ensemble. Um, but I want to leave those out. Okay, so I, I, I want to today talk about systems that don't have any special properties. So they're not integrable. They are interacting. So nothing has been set fine-tuned to make the system special. Right? So, so it's many degrees of freedom. The only, th the only restriction I want to put on for, for talking about many-body localization is the interactions are short-range in real space. That's what I'm about to tell you, yes. Oh. <laughs> That's what, yeah, definition. I haven't defined it yet. <laughs> so this is, this is a title and this is the first line of it, not that this isn't the definition. This is just a statement about quantum dynamics. Yeah. The rest of the system is the bath. But if you look at the whole thing, will it thermalize? So you don't look at subsystems. That's exactly what I'm about to talk about. Yes. Okay. This dynamics here is reversible. Right? And so any property, any information at all that's in the initial state is still present in the system at final time. And so the system doesn't forget anything about its initial state. So the full system does not go to thermal equilibrium. Right? So when we say the system goes to thermal equilibrium, we do not mean the full system goes to thermal equilibrium, meaning the state of the full system goes to one of the thermal equilibrium distributions that we're familiar with from statistical mechanics. That's just not true because you know, something like one particular equilibrium distribution is e to the minus beta h. So let's call this rho beta. Right? So this is thermal equilibrium divided by a partition function. Right? Thermal equilibrium at this temperature is e to the minus beta h over z. There is no out of equilibrium state which dynamically goes to this. Right? This is a time independent state. You run the dynamics forward or backwards in time, it doesn't change at all. Right? So this is not an attractor of the dynamics. Right? So, nor is the microcanonical ensemble or any of the other equilibrium ensembles you know from statistical mechanics. None of them attract the dynamics of the system. The systems do not go to those distributions, the full system. So the full system does not go to, the full system does not go to thermal equilibrium in the sense you would naively think, which is it goes to a distribution which is one of the familiar equilibrium ensembles. And that's why we have to define thermalization, because the naive definition is clearly wrong. Yeah? In the classical step, you have to do argument about doing a time average, right? And then the, den the distribution function is this time average thing smeared out of the whole space or whatever. Right. That's not what this world is. Right. Wouldn't you have to do something similar before you could even talk about like, what the equilibrium Well, for example, let's start it in an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Then it just stays in the eigenstate. It stays in that eigenstate. So it doesn't go to equilibrium in, doesn't go to any of the familiar distributions from statistical mechanics. Right. And I could time average, and of course, rho of t would be time independent in that case. Yeah. In fact, if I do the time average here, I just get the diagonal ensemble. And that doesn't have to be one of the standard ensembles of statistical mechanics. Right. Right. So, so it, I'll say a little bit more about classical, the relation of this stuff to classical physics a little bit later. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, 
Right. So you asked about the dynamics in terms of the so so uh, in terms of the eigenstates of U. So in basis of U's eigenstates. Rho, the diagonal terms don't evolve. Right, so U gives the time evolution. It's an operator. It has eigenstates. Its diagonal operators don't evolve, right? Because U and U dagger, they cancel. And then Rho, the off diagonal terms, just pick up a face. In the basis of the eigenstates of the unitary time evolution operator, the dynamics is trivial. All it is is the off-diagonal terms pick up phases. Nothing else happens. So there's nothing going on other than just phase changes. And that's the sense in which the dynamics is very simply reversible, right? Because all you have to do is reverse these phases and you're back to the initial state. Right? If you knew what these states were, and you knew what these phases were, it would be true. Of course, knowing what the eigenstates are and knowing what the phases are is a highly non-trivial exercise. And that's what makes... Uh... Okay. So the conclusion from this is full system uh, does not forget anything about its initial state all information in the initial state is still in the system. It just, typical quantum dynamics takes the information in the initial state and hides it. It takes the information which might be easily accessible in the initial state and puts it in operators involving many, many degrees of freedom so that that information is hidden. It's not gone, it's just hidden. And that's what quantum dynamics does in closed systems. Okay. So, thermalization, as has been said already, is of subsystems. So when we say the system goes to thermal equilibrium for time goes to infinity, what we mean is the states of its subsystems goes to, go to thermal equilibrium for time goes to infinity. And that's what happens. And the system, so here's my system, full system. Here's some subsystem S, some subset of all the degrees of freedom, defines my subsystems. And then S bar is all the rest of the degrees of freedom in the system. And S bar serves as a bath. That's how systems go to, go to thermal equilibrium, is S bar. The system is a bath for its own subsystem, working this way. OK, now, so S is my subsystem. I can take almost any subsystem, but not any subsystem you could dream of. Yeah, some questions here? Uh, yeah, so when you define thermalization for a subsystem, uh, if, it, if you take two different subsystems, how, uh, how, how are they related to each other? Well, when the system thermalizes, they both thermalize to the same thermodynamic parameters. Okay. So, so thermalization is thermalization of all subsystems. So if we all subsystems, except for some special cases I'm going to tell you about right now. Right, so if you take and they all thermalize to the same temperature, the same chemical potential, etc. Right, but if you take your possible disjoint set um, S and then combine them to S bar, uh, combine them, then you get the whole system. Right. So you can define thermalization for the whole uh, many body system and go about it. As thermalization of subsystems, yes. Okay. Right. But the subsystems are all entangled with each other. The full system is not in a Boltzmann distribution. 
Because the Boltzmann distribution doesn't have any non-trivial entanglement between subsystems. Or it has a little bit, but not a lot. Right? The, the real system might have some very rich entanglement structure between the subsystems, which is not there in the Boltzmann distribution. Well, they're in the same state they would be in if the full system was in a Boltzmann distribution. But I'm going I'm to go through that carefully. Yeah? So what happens when the size of the subsystem approaches the size of the system? Okay, so we're going to take s bar to infinity first with s finite. So to define it properly, we take this to infinity, keeping this finite. And I'll say that in a second. Yeah. Said the full system doesn't forget. Right. What do you mean by that? Because doesn't forget all the any information that's in the initial state is still there in the full system. Yeah, but that's always the case. You yes, exactly. Yeah. It's a trivial statement. I agree. Okay. <laughs> but often forgotten. Okay. Right. Because you know you naively say the system goes to thermal equilibrium. Oh, it went to a Boltzmann distribution. Okay. That would be a naive answer, and it's just contradictory to very basic physics, which is. Which is, as you say, it's trivial. <laughs> trivial but forgotten, even though obvious. Yeah? Since you divide to isolate a subsystem and take it in the region, S by infinity times infinity, does this mean the thermalization process is inhomogeneous? Say it again? Inhomogeneous thermalization. Inhomogeneous in what sense do you mean? Uh, like uh, you, can, you can have many subsystems, but they uh, thermalize in different sense of rate. Yeah, that certainly could be the case that the different subsystems uh, dynamically take different amounts of times to approach thermal equilibrium, yes. And yeah. these subsystems, they, they should be interact with each other, right? Yes. But, Absolutely. But we treat the whole system as a bag. So do we still need to consider this kind of interaction? Yes. Yes. Right. Everything is interact. I, I, I want everything to be strongly interacting. Anything at short distances is allowed to be strongly interacting in what I'm doing. I don't want to make any weakest, no weak. So when I say subsystem and bath, they're strongly interacting with each other. So I don't want to do what's often done when you think of a subsystem and a bath is you weakly couple the bath to the subsystem. I do not want to do that. Okay. So, so I do not want to do that. So my bath and my subsystem are strongly coupled, but only, only at the boundary. Well, I don't. I'm not going to do what's traditionally done, which is assume it's weak and break the Hamiltonian into three terms, the subsystem, the bath, and then the coupling. Because the, I want to treat the case where that's not helpful, right? Because none of them are small. If, if I, OK, so let me talk about the subsystems, right? So the subsystem is any. Uh, set of degrees of freedom, I should say finite set, defined by a finite set of the microscopic degrees of freedom. So in terms of thinking about that and making things simple, the simplest thing to think about is, yes, this is just a real space cut. So this picture is real space. I've cut out a subsystem, which is a region in real space. There's a boundary and the rest of the system, right? But it doesn't have to be, right? I could Fourier transform it and look at the subsystem could be the occupations and the properties of particles at particular points in momentum space or any other way of partitioning it, as long as, you know, why am I defining it this way? What we are not allowed to use as our subsystem 
is a subsystem defined by the eigenstates of the unitary time evolution operator. Right? So this unitary time evolution operator has eigenstates, and those degrees of freedom don't really thermalize, right? because under the time evolution, the eigenstates don't change at all. Right? And so we need to define the subsystem using the microscopic degrees of freedom and a finite number of them for two reasons. One, this is all any experiment is ever going to be able to do. Right? So any experiment, the number of degrees of freedom it can couple to at the same time is going to be finite. Right? You can't look at an arbitrary operator on a, on a, on a big system arbitrarily complicated operator. So, so the finite set of microscopic degrees of freedom, that's because that's all you're ever going to be able to do an experiment. And for a generic system, the eigenstates of the unitary time evolution operator are non-trivial operators on the full system, so they're not accessible with such subsystems. Right? So, so any physically accessible subsystem is fine for this. But mathematically, you could define subsystems that don't thermal. By using, by using uh, eigenstates of the dynamics. Okay, and then S bar is the rest, the rest of the degrees of freedom. Okay, and then the state of S is just rho sub s of t, which is trace over s bar rho of t. So we take the state of the full system, we trace over all the other degrees of freedom. Now that sounds like that's an active thing, but it isn't. What this means is you just ignore all the other degrees of freedom. Okay. And the state of the subsystem is given by this. So even if this was a pure state, if there's any entanglement between S bar and S, now this is a mixed state. And this is, just gives the probability distribution of any operator measured on this subsystem. The, state of the, the, state, the density operator, which is the state of a system or a subsystem, is an operator valued probability distribution. It gives you the properties, the probability distributions of any observer. On the, on the subsystem. Okay. No, it's trivial. It's trivial. Because a Boltzmann distribution is time independent. And a trick you trace out a large. Well, uh, let, let, me, let me give the definition and you'll see that it's trivial. Uh, okay, so I'm sort of setting it up, you know, in order, you know, I'm trying to do this thoroughly and honestly. This is a summer school, we have time, I hope. Um, so I'm giving you the you know, the fine print on these things, you know, there's various places where one could make incorrect assumptions, um, and it's good to point them out. Um, yeah? Um, just going back to the uh, full system, just the project part, is it a consequence that we're considering a pure state? Um, Excuse me? The full system does not propagate with the, the information in the initial state, <coughs> as it means in the, in the time of all state. Is that a consequence of pure state, or does it? No, that's general. That holds on each <coughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm assuming the initial. I'm assuming the initial state is not in thermal equilibrium, right? So if the initial state is in thermal equilibrium, it'll stay in thermal equilibrium, right? So I'm assuming the initial state is not in thermal equilibrium, and we're asking the question: With time, does it go to thermal equilibrium, right? And and if it's not in thermal equilibrium, it's out of equilibrium in some measures, right? So there's a whole bunch of quantities you could measure on the initial state, which tells you it's out of thermal equilibrium, and that's the information about the initial state. 
right? And, and, and this is general, right? I'm, I'm not, when I talk, of, when I say something that's specific to pure states, I will highlight that. 